All right, so welcome back to the channel, guys. It is me, AD Simone for Four. So today, guys, I'm joined by Pule, and today we'll be doing our El Clasico preview, guys. And this is a huge one, man. Uh, the Spanish Super Cup, man. There's a fine, there's a trophy on the line here, guys. And Real Madrid, of course, are looking to get revenge for last season's uh, Super Cup final. And obviously, we're looking to do back to back. So it'll be very interesting to see what happens. Of course, we got El Clasico final. And today, man, I'm joined by Kule, man. So, Kule, man, thank you for taking the time of your busy life to join, man. Do appreciate it. So, man, give me your thoughts, man. How are you feeling, man? Are you excited, nervous, scared? How are you feeling? Uh, first of all, I'd like to say thank you for having me, AD, into the live stream once again. Uh, shout out to all the Barca fans, Real Madrid fans who are looking forward to this game. And my sensation in this game is excitement. Um, excitement. Uh, well, what's the other word I'm looking for? Um I'm thinking of other words that can, because this is the biggest game in in club football. So I'm very happy to that we're in the final. Very happy that we're gonna face the best of the best. Of course, uh, this is a game that can really turn the season. This is a crucial game for Barcelona. Um, again, in the classicals form doesn't matter. It's who wants it more. So um, as of right now. I I, says, I fear no one. Fear no fear Madrid. Don't fear Bayern. Don't fear anyone. So, as of right now, very confident. I'm very excited for this final. Yeah, I'm also um, excited as well. I'm also kind of nervous as well because I I'm not our form recently has been great, but we know that El Clasico form doesn't really matter. Form does not matter whatsoever when it comes to this kind of fixture and that it's just about which team wants it more in the day you know that's all that really matters you know and so that's the important thing so actually i want to ask you this question um do you think this game is like how do you think this game is like season defining that whichever team wins this te game is going to have a great season and whichever team loses this game is going to have a disastrous season do you agree with this notion mm, i think it is season defining more towards us our beloved club barca we win this game, we win it convincingly. That'll give us a big moral boost. A major, it's going to definitely hit Madrid very heavily because, you know, nobody wants to lose a classical, especially in a final with a trophy at stake. So as of right now, yeah, pressure is more on, on, I don't think there's pressure. I think Barca is relying on this win to start out the second half of the season on a good run which i believe is going to happen based on what's happened in the past three seasons well on the other hand for real madrid <clears throat> they're in good form great position in the league tied with girona they don't really need this they don't really need to win you know they're in a good position but the fact that it's a classical they won't back down they'll, they'll give it a good fight but if we manage to defeat them and really destroy them in this game is i believe that it's gonna be a very heavy pill to swallow for them and it could help barca in the second half of the season to start making a comeback in the league which i for me if i predict it will be it, it this second half i believe that barcelona will have a insane winning run throughout the season and that's what i'm hoping yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. And, um, and also, it's interesting to note that Real Madrid's next game after this is against Atletico Madrid, the Madrid Derby. So uh, that th they're playing against their two rivals in like span of like a week. So like, it's going to be very interesting to see how this game will psychologically affect them. Because imagine they uh, lose this game, going into that Atletico Madrid game, then they they could possibly be out of two competitions within a span of like two weeks. You know, lose oh, out two competitions. So it's the Copa del Rey, Atletico. Yeah, Copa del Rey is next. I think it's gonna be at the Metropolitano. Is that the name? Yeah, Wanda Metropolitano. So Wanda like, Metropolitano. So yeah. It, oh my gosh. I didn't even realize that this can actually we can actually turn their season it we can actually end their season here if we um I, I think it can be a massive confidence blow if we beat them. I think yeah, this yeah, is that, why this is key. This is a key game. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, and I know people are going to say, oh, it's a Super Cup. Why should we care? It's like a community shield and this kind of stuff. Like, no, it doesn't matter. Like, it's a trophy. There's a trophy at the line. And, yes, it doesn't – yes, yes, even if the trophy is not significant compared to La Liga League title, it's still a trophy. And I'm sure most people take a trophy over no trophies any day of the week, you mm -hmm. know. 
And I'll say I'm not a big fan of going to Saudi Arabia to play these competitions, but at the end of the day, me as a Barca fan, I'll, <clears throat> beating Madrid is what we love doing. We'll beat them in anything, rap, paper, scissors, marbles, the, the tag and war. If there's a, a classical competition of anything, I expect Barca to win. This is why this is why um, for us there's no such thing as a friendly classical. There's no such thing as a friendly match between Barca and Real Madrid. Every game that we play is a final. Every game is a big game. So for me, this will for us for pride for who's the best of of the best. We want to win no matter what competition we're involved in. Yeah. It's also interesting that last season we were also in a similar position around this time frame. <clears throat> Barca were not in good form heading to uh, heading to this game. Real Madrid were in great form, you know, coming at um, you know with their unbeaten streak and then um, well not unbeaten streak, but they had like good winning streak. We were on the other hand kind of struggling, and then all of a sudden we won the Super Cup and the rest is history. That season, you know, we won the domestic double. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if, if correct me if I'm wrong, but they were in a good, they were they were pretty much undefeated in a crazy winning streak. Oh, yeah, good football, but when the <clears throat> Super Cup happened, the odds were in Real Madrid's favor. We ended up winning the game and we won again very convincingly. Like, guys, if you go, if you watch a game that's like, yeah, a masterclass of Barcelona, masterclass of Xavi. So, again, I'll say, I, I, this is where we go back and we say this, this when it comes to a classical form, goes out the window, yeah. And as I said, um, it's about which team wants it more in the day, and you know that's the more important thing. And like I said, it's gonna be interesting. So I think, um, I think we discussed enough about the the match itself. We're gonna go into pre- we'll go into expected lineups for both teams, and then we'll talk about tactics as well. So let's start with the Barca eleven. So this is the Barca eleven that me and Kule believe is gonna happen now. For you guys, probably wonder who is that left midfielder. Um, I believe it's gonna be Pedri. No, so not Pedri. Fermi Lopez. Fermi Lopez. Sorry, uh, correction there. And we believe that Barca will play a four four two for this game because. Barca, uh, our wingers, our winger options are very limited. Rafinha got injured um, coming into this game, and so, and I just don't really think Xavi's going to start Yamal in this kind of a uh, El Clasico game. And I feel like Yamal and uh, Joao Felix are much better coming off the bench. Do you agree? I completely agree. I feel like this is the most suitable formation. We try to dominate the midfield, try to put numbers in the midfield, try to suffocate them, oppress them, make their center backs make their center backs have difficulty playing from the back again we need to stop them from transition so hopefully this will be enough and yeah. of course i would like to see us play balls over the top we've been doing that a lot recently and i'm actually i'm, I'm fully 100 percent agree that we should do that more often uh, especially i guess low blocks or if we you decide to be a little bit compact we can just try cross into the box or more into the center um, yeah, um, that's 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 the sensation. This is what we're gonna have to try to recover, try to do things that we did right the last Super Cup that we were in, which I got. We just gotta do better. I believe that this this defense is what we need. This is this is the most stable defense we can come up with, and of course we need Inaki Peña to show up. We need him to to be calm and collected, not to get nervous, to just just be calm. I know he's a backup goalkeeper, but. He needs to do a little more. I'm pretty satisfied with him, to be honest. But midfield-wise, this is this is where Fermin. For me, Fermin is gonna be key. He has an extra offensive mindset. He makes good runs. He carries the ball. He has an eye for goal. Pedri, dictating play. Same with Frankie Dion. Gundogan. I think Gundogan is gonna be key as well. He's gonna have to have his best best game, which I believe he will. He scored in his, his first El Clasico. Yeah. <clears throat> I say Ferran Torres, he's gonna have to work really hard this game. Really, really hard. Pressing, making up for um, Lewandowski, lack of output. Uh, so that's basically yeah. that's what I believe is gonna happen. Yeah, Lewandowski, you also have to turn up in this game, man. Uh, there's a, this is a huge game for you. And, um, you know, you scored in the last game, so hopefully you can continue that streak. And um, it'll be really interesting to see whether Roque comes on that Classico. Maybe he could come off the bench and create get an impact and um that'll be nice to see um and obviously um it'll be interesting to see and then obviously um who is it called uh Joao Cancel is injured so I don't know if he'll be I think he'll be available for this game but I don't think Javi will start him he'll probably come off the bench 
so maybe can give us impact coming off the bench. Um, and then obviously Balde, uh, you're gonna have to be in your best man with the crossing because I uh, recently have not been impressed with him. And um, yeah, it's oh yeah, I made a mistake here. I'm sorry. I'm gonna put we're gonna put Rajo at right back because obviously Rajo is gonna man mark Vinicius. So yeah, mm-hmm. uh, the Kunde Christensen man. Um, hopefully the two can have a good game as well because like I said, uh, Kunde have not really been that impressed with to be honest recently, but you know. Christensen as well. He's a, and I do agree with you, know, you. He's the most intelligent defender we have. This club, most intelligent mm-hmm. defender we have. So, um, moving to Real Madrid eleven. Oh, I actually want to say one last thing before we move on. Um, I do think the four four two will give us more control in the midfield because part of the reason why we lost the last El Clasico is because we didn't really have control. Um, I think the four four two will give us more control in the game, and I think that's something you really need in this kind of game. So if you want to win the game, you need to have control, and I think that's going to be very important. Mm-hmm. So, uh, for Real Madrid, of course, this is going to be their 11. Um, this is probably the expected 11 for them. Pretty much the same 11 as the last game. Um, and obviously, the player to look out for um, is obviously Bellingham. Obviously, he's a player we're going to have to somehow stop. And um, we well, also, also, also got to be careful about Rudiger and his aerial threat. Been very, yeah, with arrows. Very, very, very dangerous in the box. So, we got to concede less corners. Um, of course, you're gonna have to. Uh, but Vinicius will always be an issue. But for me, the guy we gotta stop permanently is just Bellingham. But my opinion for this game is, I feel like we shouldn't be focused too much on stopping individuals and just trying to focus on hurting that weak back line they have, that weak goalkeeper. So for me, we gonna have to outscore our opponents and. <laughs> That's the way to go for Madrid. They're going to try to hit us in transition, which is our major, major weakness this season. Transitional play has not been good um, for Barca. We have not been able to stop it. That's mainly due to the fact that the absence of Gavi. Gavi is a guy that can read the game very well. He tends to make it very uncomfortable for midfields to play from to, to keep position and start the transitional play. So a big blow for not having a guy like Gavi. But I think we'll manage but again, Madrid are dangerous because of their individuals. But hopefully, as a collective, we can be able to hurt them. They're gonna try to hurt us in transitions. If we, we have zero margin for error, so this is what I believe is gonna happen. Yeah, and obviously Real Madrid. They, the the what also worries me for this game is that the players that they, they have off the bench because Barca we have Yamal, we have Roque, um, Cancelo likely, and whereas Real Madrid have come up Minga. Brian Diaz, Ozilu, like I feel like Real Madrid's bench is just superior to our bench, and so like <clears throat> um, their bench can make more of a difference coming off. Whereas our bench, if we're in like a losing position, I don't really trust anyone else from the bench to really make that difference for us. You know, <laughs> for me, what I'm concerned about again, I agree completely. I agree with what he says about the midfield and the bench. For me. Now, I always say this, and I always say this, the ball, the most crucial ball in a football pitch is the midfield. The fact that Real Madrid has option to replenish the midfield and they have options to replenish the attack is what's going to make it very difficult around the 70th minute where Carlo Ancelotti tends to do his substitutions. Uh, for Barca, I'll say the fact that we have a player like Vito Roque that can come on, give us extra energy, a bit more pace in behind, I think it's going to be very crucial. Yamin Yamal, he's very electric, very unpredictable. We don't know what we can get from a 16-year-old, but um, I believe that he's going to be useful for the minutes we're going to give him. But Chao Felix, he's going to be on the bench. He's going to be a secondary option. He's going to have to show up when he comes off the bench. He has to do something. He has to be some sort of impact. So um, this is this is a sensation. If Jao Cancelo is available for this game, he gets the medical green light to come off the bench, and that's gonna be another boost. We're gonna have options to combat the, the Real Madrid. But as of right now, Real Madrid has the upper hand based on based on the individuals. They have a way better squad, way more talented. Um, but you know. You can easily beat individuals if you play as a collective, play as a team, work hard for each other, do what Barca are always known for doing, that is playing as a team, fighting for each other, showing that you're, you guys being united can defeat any individuals in a, in a so-called super team in Real Madrid. So this is, this is a sensation. We have to recover it. 
Yeah, and obviously, um, one of Real Madrid's biggest uh, weaknesses I've noticed in the last few games is their crossing ability. Um, they cannot really handle crosses into the box, and we've seen how Atletico Madrid exploited that in the last game. And um, they also exploit that in the La Liga game that happened several months ago. So maybe in this kind of game, we could uh, take advantage of the crosses. Now, obviously, we're not, I don't think we're as good as crossing as compared to Atletico Madrid, but if we we can at least have somewhat decent, that maybe could do something. And so maybe uh, Joao Cancel, if he comes on, he can make those good crosses, and that could maybe hurt the Real Madrid back line. Because as um, Kule just pointed out, the Real Madrid defense is, even though it's been really solid this season in general, I do feel like it's not as bulletproof as. People are making out to be. I do feel like this Real Madrid defense is reachable. It's not as perfect as people are making out to be. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, anything. So, I guess this uh, rounds back to our prediction. Um, like I said, I am. <laughs> it's a difficult one to me because I'm kind of torn here because my I have like two two minds with this game. My my head is saying that Real Madrid is going to win this, but my brain, my heart is saying that Barca is going to win this. So. I don't know what to go with there. Um, I guess I'll go with my head, but I'm really hoping I'm proven wrong though. So, how about you, Kuli? Obviously, I think you're gonna back Barca. A hundred percent. Of course, um, people tend to call me arrogant, uh, 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 way too po- confident, way too positive. With a uh, you know, pretty mediocre Barca side, but it's you know, it's, it's a job of a fan to dream, you know, to to be a little bit deluded so uh i see in my head a 2-0 victory for barca very convincing i think we're gonna show the world that we're not finished that we're not not in a huge hole that i want expected i think it's just a bad patch so after we take these guys out uh we're gonna start doing that little comeback we do and hopefully we can stretch it out a bit further and hopefully real magic can start dropping points in the league same with girona and we can reclaim back our La Liga title that we rightfully won last season, having the best defense, having the best mentality in the league. So um, that's this is what I I'm hoping for. And uh, Liska Barca. Yeah, I guess I'll probably say Real Madrid to Barca one. I guess that will be my honest prediction. But I'm hoping I'm wrong though. So if I give my 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 hard prediction, I'll say probably Barca two one. I don't. I just have a feeling it'll be. Like a, I just have a feeling it'll be two one, for some reason. I feel like it'll be a close game. Um, like I said, though, we're gonna have a live stream on Sunday after the game. Uh, we'll have a post match reaction stream, and uh, we're gonna be there. Whatever happens, if we lose, I'm gonna be there. If we win, I'm gonna be there. So you know, I'll be there no matter what, <laughs> as I like to say. So you know, like I said, um, it, it's gonna be very interesting to see what happens. I'm looking forward to this game, and um, may the best team win, man. May, may the best team win, and it's gonna be interesting, of course. See what happens, real guys. To um, like and subscribe, of course. Um, you know, I want to get a 20 likes uh, video. That'd be awesome. And yeah, I hope you guys did enjoy, man. And let me know what you guys think in the comments below, man. Maybe we should do more collaborations with me and Kool-Aid. Uh, maybe we'll do it for the big games of Barca season, maybe. But um, anyways, I think that's all for me. Do you have anything else to say before we round off? Uh, Bellingham, watch out. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> all right, man. All right. So hope you guys enjoy, man. Peace out.